Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Are you looking to store backups of multiple PCs and or laptops with potentially terabytes of data well, off-site? Keep watching, because this new series might interest you. Now, to start off this video series, in 2017 I did an article or blog post series called DIY Cloud Backup. This series was fueled by the loss of what was then known as Crash Plan Family Plan. This plan offered unlimited backups for up to 10 PCs in your family. This was an excellent fit for me at the time, and I and lots of others really loved it. But in 2017, they announced the service would stop, so I searched for alternatives, but I couldn't really f find any to suit my needs. Those needs are fairly simple, well, at least in my opinion. I want to back up, let's say, seven PCs of both Windows and Linux variety. Combined with that, I do have some pretty large storage requirements because I need up to 15 terabyte just for myself. You know, something with uh, making videos and such. Now, I already hear you typing in the comments, ah, what's this guy talking about? Just use Blackblaze or Jota Cloud. It's all unlimited easy. Yes, if you want to back up only a single machine, then they have a nice $60 a year account for Blackblaze and $90 for Jota Cloud. But one machine just isn't going to cut it. I have multiple computers a laptop or two, and even some VMs I'd like to have a regular backup of. Okay, sure, I hear you, they have accounts and pricing for that too. But then suddenly the pricing becomes all different. Blackblaze B2 Cloud Storage is now per gigabyte per month. So with 15,000 gigabytes or 15 terabytes, that would cost $75 a month or $900 a year. Hmm, okay, Jada Cloud then. Well, they offer something called Home 10 Terabyte, which still isn't 15 terabyte, but that's already $49.50 a month or about $600 for a whole year. For the purpose of calculating, we're going to look at the costs of running this setup for a period of at least five years. With Blackblaze B2, that would end up around $4,500 for that five year period, and Jada Cloud extrapolated to 15 terabyte would be exactly the same. Well now, $4,500 is a lot of money, and I'm sure both providers would provide excellent service, but for that kind of money, I can easily build a backup server from some older hardware, or even new hardware, and throw in a few disks myself. This is a backup server, and while I'd like it to be online 24 seven, in my opinion, for, for my use case, if it's down at some point, maybe even for a few days, that's not too big of a deal. As long as I know my data is safe, eh, I need to go over to where the backup server is and get it back online again. And well, that's exactly what I did in 2017. I got some very cheap hardware for about $400 and threw in five times 10 terabyte disks in, well, you guys know me by now, I love ZFS in a Z-Raid 2 to, as I said, at least keep my data safe. Thus, I ended up with about 30 terabytes of usable space. The disks were the most expensive part, of course, and I believe the five times Seagate Ironwolf 10 terabyte disks I bought three years ago, which are all still running fine, costed about 310 euros a piece, and while well, looking them up right now, they still go for about 280 euros, so that would be 1400 euro or dollar for just the disks right now. But even combined with the hardware I mentioned, that's $1,800, and that's still quite far removed from the $4,500 that the cloud providers would cost over the same period of time. And if the hardware lasts even longer, which you should generally be allowed to expect, the savings versus the cloud would be even higher. And yes, I know there are some extra costs there too, such as power costs and maybe housing, but even then it's not even close. Now, speaking of housing, the last item you need for this setup is, well, a place to put this box. Keeping it in home is a no-go in my opinion because of potential fires, flooding, and well, whatever else could happen nowadays. 
In my case, my parents happen to have a 500 by 500 fiber internet connection, so this backup server lives in a closet over there. But generally, even a asymmetrical connection should work fine, since most of what you're doing is uploading towards that location, and then for that location, it's download, which generally has plenty of bandwidth available. Okay, so that is the whole setup, as I mentioned. I did a whole blog series about that three years ago. Time to revisit this and do a new video series about it, including some new tutorials and changes I've made since then. All previously mentioned calculations were with the current numbers while filming this. So as it turns out, in my opinion, not much has changed in regards to the situation from where I started this project. If you have the need for multi-PC backup with large amounts of storage, it's much cheaper to set this up yourself. I now also have some friends sharing the box or service, which makes it cost even less for all of us. Okay, so that's the premise and validation of this project done. Although everything is cloud around you nowadays, with specific needs and mostly that is large amounts of data you want to store, doing this yourself can still be significantly cheaper than relying on all the cloud providers. In this video, I also want to discuss the hardware I'm going to use on my 2021 version of this project. I recently did a live stream building up that server, so if you want the exact details, please take a look at that video. Basically, although the hardware I was running is still running fairly okay, there have been some stability issues recently, and I could also use a bit of a performance bump too. If you're looking to run a smaller setup right now, I'd probably go with a passively cooled J4125 box with two large USB disks. This box is about $150 to $200 fully configured, and one of these USB housings to you know insert two disks to run them in a mirror is quite cheap nowadays. Uh, you'll be seeing... Ooh, my finger got stuck. <laughs> you'll be seeing more about this box and some benchmarks and stuff like that in a future video. Not related to this series, but something else I'm working on for a server series later in this year. But what you need in regards to hardware all depends on your needs. And since I'm running 50 terabytes, I've decided to scale it up while also keeping it relatively cheap, and that is by using some older desktop hardware I still have. While I do spend some money on getting a nice case and a new power supply, the processor is actually a special energy conserving i5 4570S, so from the Haswell generation. But it's a quad core running at 2.9 gigahertz, so even though it's a few years old, eh, more than enough power for running a remote backup server like this. Maybe even a bit overkill, but that's what I already have, so it doesn't cost anything. Better yet, by scrounging together some more art hardware, I have 16 gigabytes of memory in there, so if I wanted to, I could even run a VM or something like that. So all good there, free hardware, because, well, I purchased it before, but still. <laughs> As I mentioned, I did spend a little bit on a new chassis and a new power supply. I wanted some hot swap base and needed something that would fit micro ATX motherboards, since again, that was the hardware I had. Maybe a slightly less fancy case would have been fine too, but I can easily use this case for the next 10 years or so, even though I might replace the hardware inside it, so I thought it would be a good investment. Maybe you also have some older hardware laying around that you could do the same with. A desktop from a few years ago, not much good as a desktop anymore, but maybe perfect as a little Linux server. Let me know down in the comments, I'm always interested to hear what you guys are running. Or Maybe you're not as crazy as I am, but who knows? Luckily, in my case, uh, as you can see in the live stream, it all fit and worked perfectly. Well, in the end, at least. I don't really have any doubts this will run fine for at least a few more years, and then I'll see what spare hardware I have by that time to replace it with. Power-wise, it uses about 20 to 25 watts while idle, so that's pretty decent too. I am going to do a knock to a fan swamp on it though, because although it's not horribly noisy out of the box, it can certainly be made better. And well, this is kind of where I wanted to cut this video short. 
Hopefully the idea behind the setup is clear, which is basically is make a server which can receive backups remotely. In the next video, we'll talk a bit more about the software part of things and probably already do some basic install steps. A sneak preview is that we're going to be using Proxmox as the OS and storage software called Minio combined with the Restic backup client. I hope to see you guys back for that next time. Bye-bye.